So alongside LBS, I've been accepted to Imperial and I've been accepted to Duke, um, to Kellogg, as well as to um, uh, what ESCP. The only one uh, that uh, these were the only ones that I pretty much applied to because I was more interested in the UK market as well as in the US. Um, I was less interested in Europe, so basically I applied to mostly the UK schools as well as the American schools. When you said you got, you receive a scholarship, huh? Yeah. So I received a scholarship from a couple of schools. So I received a scholarship of ten thousand dollars from um, from Duke, and I received a um, Eiffel scholarship as well as fifty percent off on my entire tuition fee from ESSEC. And how much does it make fifty percent off? So it makes a uh, twenty k. Huh? Yeah, it makes twenty k as well as uh, I would be. I would have gotten around twelve hundred. Uh, 1200 euros a month from the Eiffel, uh, the Eiffel scholarship as well. So that pretty much makes it a hundred percent scholarship. Okay. And you refuse, you refuse the 100% scholarship, this, this, uh, this big end uh, and, and why, because it's, uh, it's like it's an excellent school and, uh, that would have been very good school. So what, why have you refused a sec with a 100% scholarship? Yeah. So that was a little bit of a personal reason because I preferred to go to UK because it was a little bit more familiar to me. Uh, Essex also being a very being a very wonderful school, that is why I applied to it. But for me, LBS was the priority. So once I got an LBS, it was pretty much um, it had to be LBS. So for me, LBS was the priority. But had had I not gone to LBS, then Essex would have been a wonderful choice as well. Okay, I know. What makes uh, LBS stand out for you? Because of course, we have, alors, uh, it's one of the key de key destinations for our students. Okay, even though we see more and more students, uh, especially from India, who now study at ESSEC and ESCP. Huh? Okay, alors, what makes uh, LBS stand out so much? What makes you refuse uh, such a financing from LBS uh, from ESSEC? So, what makes LBS stand out according to you? Tell me. For me, LBS, uh, one of the major reasons that LBS stood out the most was because um, being in London, it, it was probably one of my dream cities and London being one of the largest financial centers of the entire world. I thought that um, and it, uh, LBS being in central London, the location mattered a lot to me. Uh, another reason LBS really mattered to me and stood out was its, uh, was its diversity. So LBS having the Guinness Book of World Record for the most number of people for the most number of people from different countries in a single course, uh, that the kind of diversity there is in LBS as well as London really mattered uh, matter to me. Um, many other colleges also um, are pretty diverse, but I think LBS with its diversity and with its excellent uh, placement record after the end of MIM as well as MBA programs, I thought that. Uh, it was probably the best program for me, given my career goals. Okay. Uh, and you, you intend to stay in the UK uh, post, uh, uh, post so, uh, MIM? Yeah. So um, I intend to stay in the UK for at least three to four years after MIM to gain the experience of working in uh, the UK market. After that, I will probably, uh, I, it, I can stay in UK as well, but I'm not really sure where I will end up, probably in the Middle East. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, very, very good. Uh, so, so I'm asking something, and 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 so I know I know that we wrote uh, about your care plans. Maybe they have changed since uh, since um, last summer. Uh, so, so, what are your post MIM career plans in terms of geography, sector, position? Yeah. So, uh, my bachelor's being in architecture, I would probably end up going in a field which has some relatability to my undergraduate as well. So currently my undergrad, my plans after the MIM mostly revolve around the sector of real estate. Uh, and I would be looking to apply in the real estate sector, probably in the strategy or in consulting. Um, some of the companies that I'm highly interested in are like CBRE or Knight Frank, or Wake Cushman and Wakefield, all these large multinational companies or banks which are uh which would be the major goals for me but um uh, other than that i would like to probably i would like to stay in london for the future at least for the next couple of years being 
with it being one of the best real estate centers of the world um after that probably i would like to work in the in the real estate field in consultancy but in the middle east or in the us and you don't, you don't know yet huh? you don't know yet and yeah. why have you refused to go to the us too expensive uh, uh, especially duke is a is a stem program so after duke you could have uh, stayed uh, for for three months in the uh, in the us so why uh, why have you turned on the us after having applied to us programs so there were a couple of reasons i preferred uk over the us um, one of the major reasons is that the programs in the U.S., especially MIM, is sort of a new thing. It started a few years ago, and most of these programs, while they have shown a great growth, cannot compete with the European programs, which are which have been going on for a much longer time. And that mm -hmm. I think that I thought would help me uh, would kind of hinder my process, uh, my job seeking ability because the MIM program not being as well known well known in the U.S. as compared to Europe and in the U.K. Um, another reason for me was um, probably the U.S. visa policies, which are much more stricter than the ones in the European, in Europe as well as in UK, where you have, where you can have a greater chance of working and then getting a PR and eventually getting the citizenship. Whereas in America, especially from coming from India, it is much much more difficult um, to work for a longer time. So probably after three to four years, you would have to go back to India or go for a, another master's or something like that. So that is why I preferred UK over US. OK. Uh, so, so tell me, what is your current situation? Uh, what, what are your plans for the next, uh, for the next uh, three, four months uh, to, to, uh, to LBS? So firstly, I would, uh, my first major step would be to complete my undergrad. So I'm in my final year and in the final month of the final year. So after that in the next couple of months after that before leaving for the uk i would probably go look for an internship in india um uh, probably spend a couple of months in an in an online internship or something like that um then adjusting to the curriculum in lbs which which would be really fast paced given that it's a one year program i would like to either uh, do some pre mim courses or uh, also to get the basic understanding of business and maths before i uh, start with the program and to get in the groove right before beginning of the program okay um so so tell me uh so you know, i didn't ask to introduce yourself so can, can you please introduce yourself yeah um so my name is Manan, and I'm currently studying in School of Planning and Architecture. Uh, I'm an architect by profession, or I would be in the next one month. Um, so I have been working with several different. Uh, I have worked in several different internships and jobs over the past couple of years alongside my college. I have worked with companies all across the world. I have worked with um, in marketing job in Europe. I worked in Prague. I've also been working with a university in Mexico um, with an in, with their economic um, working on an economics research paper. Um, yeah, so that is more on the career side of things. So I would be joining London Business School in the fall semester this year. Um, um, coming a little bit, speaking a little bit more about my personal self. So I would be I would be looking into a real estate. Um, so I would be work trying to work in the real estate sector after my masters and. Um, that is my ultimate goal. I I'm also highly into consulting as and um, a little bit about me. Um, so I am also a very good badminton player and a soccer player. So anybody who is in LBS can look me up in after a couple of years for some guidance. Okay. So yes, yeah, that's uh, that's the thing. You know, I, I didn't know that you 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 into uh, into uh, into soccer and and, and badminton. Because two uh, two tough sports, um, okay. And tell me, so I know that you have uh, you have international exposure, uh, yeah. but you have have you have you visited the UK? I don't remember that you have visited the UK. Have you visited the UK? No, no, I haven't. I haven't visited the UK. Um, I, I you visited, visited Europe. Europe you have been in Europe, years, but, uh, yeah. not in the UK. And, and and what do you expect? Uh, what do you expect your life to be like in, in London? Uh, as a student 
I expect it to be a uh, much more tougher than here because London is an expensive city. So at least for the duration of the program, it would be kind of tough managing my expenses. But uh, other than that, I think it would be much. It would be wonderful because London is one of my dream cities, and it is wonderful in terms of food, in terms of architecture, in terms of uh, beauty. So yeah, London and England in a larger perspective, all of them are like highly attractive to me. So I think. it would be interesting the next couple next couple of years would be very interesting so i aim to travel all across the uk and europe in the next couple of years uh yeah so uh but by the way you you in contact with some of my students huh uh, yeah. uh some of my students from last year Uh, so my question from last year. So they told you, and basically, for, for, from what I understand from them, uh, most of them end up working in consulting in Dubai. Yeah. Okay. And the reason being that, of course, the the Middle East market is more dynamic than uh, than, than the UK market. And second of all, uh, after tax, you make much more money. Yeah. Life is probably slightly cheaper as well. The quality of life might be better. You have the sun. You next. You close to to India. Uh, better salary after tax. Life life cheaper. You you will probably if you work in consulting, you will probably end up in uh, in London, which is which is a bit strange uh, at, at the end uh, uh, to finish so. Um, so uh, so tell me about your background because you're the first architect that. I, I know it's not true. This year I had two architects. I had a girl called Maria. Got accepted to MIT, Sloan. Okay, but she was older than you, and she was 32 years old. And you, another architect. So, what is the the purpose of from architect to go to to business? Is it because you want to be uh, a business architect, or because you want to make a career switch? Uh, so, or you want to combine the two? Uh, so, for me, uh, one of the major reasons was architect being a very very professional field. Of it, it is more of a creative field and i was somewhat of a more corporate uh, corporate job type of type of a person so i never had the dream of having my own practice because um it is difficult to having your have your own practice in india and then it takes 15 to 20 years before you start making any real money so for me one of the major reasons to for going for mim at this very early age was to look for a career shift so a lot of uh, students in my college actually end up going into real estate and um, similar fields in consultancy as well because being an architect you have the idea of how the construction works as well as getting a business degree then gives you an idea of how the business works so it makes you well set for jobs like construction management real estate management and real estate strategy and consulting so for me uh, mim was one of the ways in which i could get a career change at a very early age and then probably go into a more corporate or uh, Corporate type of a job in some sort of like consulting and strategy. Okay. Um. And and uh, and so well, so please, so now tell me about the admission process because we have worked together for for quite a long time. Okay. Yeah. Uh. So what what is it when you're based in India, far from uh, the US? uh continental europe and the uk so, so which makes the process difficult huh okay yeah uh what is it to apply okay uh so if you're applying from india i would suggest a person to first be very sure about the country as well as the course that they want to apply to if they are applying to business school then the country they where they are applying to matters a lot because the the universities in Europe are much more are quite different from the universities in US. All of them have their own quirks, and all of them look for different things in candidate. So, for example, if you are applying to Duke, uh, then they would be looking for a candidate uh, who the Duke essays are usually a lot more frank, a lot more creativity based. While essays for London Business School are much more specific, where you have to state your goals and your aspirations in detail. So that is, there's a lot of difference between each of these schools. So if you are looking to apply to one of these business schools, then you should uh, be first very aware of what the business school is like and what kind of environment they have. 
probably the best thing you can do is work with a consultant or work with or also talk with the students who are already admitted into the program because they would be able to give you the best suggestions um secondly if you're applying from india then you have to it is much more difficult because uh, there's a lot of competition from all uh, from india for these uh, top universities so you need to set yourself apart from the competition so you need to show the universities that how are you different from the rest of the group and how can you be how will you be able to contribute to the country as well as to the university where you where you, where you would be studying in the future so these two i think are the most major things you have to understand once you're applying from india because uh, the thirdly you would i would say that focusing a lot more on gmat or gre is highly important because for if you're applying from india then you would be looking at much higher scores um, from india you would probably like to have something over 325 in gre and above 720 in gmat so that is also highly important okay now basically if we talk if we start to retain the process you agree that at some stage probably uh uh yes one year and an half ago huh? okay uh you say to say what would i do after my uh my initial studies huh? after my undergraduate studies okay and you started to look around okay and finally you have been able to identify schools in europe the us probably uh as well um, as in uh, in india and you have to to come up to a certain shortlist you agree oh, okay. yeah after that, we started to prepare the the GMAT or GRE. I forgot what 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 test did you prepare? Was GMAT or GRE? GRE, I mean. uh, GRE. GRE. And what score did you get? Uh, two twenty seven. Okay, which is a very good score. So it took you what uh, three to four months. How, how long did you take? Um, so it didn't take me as long because I was already in sort of a groove for the mathematics part. Um, the major part that I had to learn was remember was probably English because uh, it is very, it is a lot of, there's a lot of vocabulary you have to learn. It is a lot of vocabulary based knowledge. So you need to remember multiple words. So I think um, you could max, you could do it in a couple of months with some practice. Uh, yeah. For me, it personally took around two months. Yeah, boy, it's pretty fast. Normally people take between three to six months. So basically <clears throat> what I want to say is that currently from India, what you learn from LMIMS, from Saint Xavier, from Symbiosis, we graduate in uh, June 2025. So basically, they are currently in class. Uh, they started uh, in January, February 2024, and they will take their GMAT or GRE in June or August. Basically, June or August. Yeah. Okay? Uh, the first one it will be June because students who are listening to us, they should not forget that uh, it's one thing to, to to get prepared but at the same time you have internship you have uh, exams you have uh, classes so um usually people need six months because they they cannot uh, focus full time uh, and sometimes they cannot even focus mm. at all for instance i have a uh, current student from ESCP, a school that we follow uh, a lot and they have exams uh, between uh, the 15 to the 30th of april and before that they have to review so like for one month mm. they stop when those who studied in February, in January, they do for two months, then uh, they stop for one month, they resume. And then, and then but the application process is going to take between uh, three, uh, between how long, be between uh, two to three months to write, to write ABC. Mm -hmm. yeah? Okay. So we imagine that they will start their GMAT in uh, January, February 24. They will get the GMAT or GRE in June or August. Then we will spend uh, August and September to write the application, uh, and they will receive um, answers in October, November to, to have an acceptance in November. Huh? You agree? So yeah. it's a very long process. So basically, you have to start like six to nine months uh, before. You have to apply almost like one month before uh, the school starts, huh? one year before the yeah. school starts. Yeah, and then after that, once you have applied, anyway, you have interviews, and you you you, you get the final answer of everything by by December, January of the following year. Okay, and after that, of course, there is the school selection because you have been accepted somewhere, and you have to find the financing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the people have to understand that no matter where you come from, it's complicated, and the problem that you have at the same time in India is that interest rates are pretty high. In India, yeah. it's eight percent so either your parents have saved uh either your parents have saved uh, 
or save money, or you have to make a loan. Uh, and since you have to make an eight to nine percent loan, some people are going to look for scholarship because it makes the financing of the program very expensive. Huh? Okay, yeah. you have to see that uh, student loans in, in Europe are one to two percent interest. Okay, so you can get a loan. Uh, it's not very costly. Okay, so there's yeah. this issue of financing for uh, the Indians. That's why I see that more and more they receive scholarship. Okay, so that they can they can come. In terms of of uh, of funding, uh, how did you do? Uh, to to fund uh, to fund your program, uh, how will you do your parents, personal savings, parents loan, uh, and what do you hear around you? Uh, so I would be mostly be funding my program from my parents' saving. So uh, probably would be taking loan for about thirty percent of the tuition amount, and the rest of the seventy percent I would be probably be paying from my parents' saving. Uh, okay. Uh, and still, so how much have you, have you budgeted? You have budgeted something like what, one hundred thousand dollars? How much have you budgeted overall, or less? Um. So, the program comes out to be. I think it is. What is? Uh, it is around fifty thousand pounds. So, um, I. We have already around sent about ten percent. You have to send in just when you get the admission, and then you you can send the rest of the amount in two different. Um, so you have to send the rest of the amount by in September and then in December. So that would be the remaining forty percent of the amount. Uh, remaining ninety percent of the amount that you have to send it then, or you okay. can show your bank documents and then they can uh, and then pay off the loan over the course of the rest of the years. Okay. How long you can take. And tell me, and how much have you planned for for LBS? Sorry. How much have you, have you planned uh, on on a, on a, on a monthly uh, on the monthly expense? Okay. Uh, so, uh, except the fees, I I can I can say it, it would be somewhat around twelve to thirteen hundred pounds a month, um, because accommodation itself is around one thousand pounds a month minimum, and then at least. Four to five hundred pounds, you can say above that. So, if you uh, a lot of Indian students end up getting part-time jobs, I mean, I have started applying for part-time jobs uh, sitting here in India itself. So, other than that, you can easily look for look at fifteen hundred pounds a month if you are sitting in central London because it is insanely expensive. <laughs> fifteen thousand pounds a month, it's it's very little, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Uh, for the month, you see, uh, it's like if you live in uh, in Bangalore with uh, with five hundred with uh, five hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. So you, it's possible to make it, but uh, you will not say, yeah, you need easily easily two thousand pounds a month easily. Uh, so which is like two thousand five hundred dollars per month easily, and and you will live really really uh, you have really a poor life with, with uh, something like that, but. That's why, um, for instance, those who listen to us, um, well, studying in France makes sense, okay? Uh, yeah. Especially, for instance, a school like HEC, because at HEC they have a dorm, okay? Uh, so I'm going to tell you how it works. So you have a dorm, you pay 500, uh, you, you're going to pay, uh, I would say, uh, 40,000 40, uh, rupees for, for, a, for a studio flat, okay? Which is, uh, when you compare to London, uh, 40,000 rupees, it is what you have to pay. Uh, a week huh? almost in, in the uk uh, and then the the french state helps you okay so you receive uh twenty thousand. Uh, so it means that that the the, um, the studio flat at hec costs twenty thousand rupees huh? oh. okay which is a joke huh? because you have you have this thing called apl which is a social help okay uh second of all uh second of all uh, at HEC, for instance, you have a canteen, huh? so you can eat. Uh, you can eat for uh, for one thousand five hundred rupees per day. Okay, which is in France not a lot. Huh? And plus, you have sport facilities. You don't have to go to gym. You have sport facilities, tennis, football, sailing on the campus itself. Huh? Uh, HEC organized the Olympics of the business school, which is called uh, what is the name of the Olympics? It's called uh, the NBA tournament. Okay. Because HEC is the only school, for instance, in uh, in Europe, to have a uh, tennis stadium, football lake, 
everything to organize a sort of mini Olympics for the business school. So what I want to, to tell you is that consider, for instance, France, because France, because of this help where the, the French state will pay half of your, of your rent, and because most of the schools have a canteen, so LBS, you see, uh, Manan has a canteen, okay? But uh, uh, to eat, uh, to have a lunch at the canteen, it costs uh, 2,000 rupees, huh? okay? Just yeah. uh, for, uh, for basic, uh, basic meal, okay? So of course, I understand uh, what, what you're doing, but, uh, but uh, yes, the UK is very expensive. So consider this part of, of, uh, of the thing, how will I finance and what will be my ROI, okay? And you see that yeah. now millions from India they go to um, to Dubai because they have uh, debts, okay. And of course, when you uh, get uh, eighty thousand uh, dollars per year without without tax, uh, and you spend uh, forty thousand, that means that you can save uh, forty thousand. So it means that in two years you pay back your M your MIM or your MBA. Huh? That's yeah. something. Yeah. Alors, yes. So so basically. Um, so basically um now how we work because we have to explain how we work so basically you came to you we were in contact together remember last summer okay yeah uh, together we selected a list of schools okay so identify that because of your gmat of your gre and your profile you could uh, you could uh, target the best which is what you got because you got duke kellogg imperial ESSEC, lbs so you got uh, uh five of the top uh, 15 best business schools and together, what we have worked, we have worked also on the application, the letters, the interviews, etc. Okay. Um, if you have not prepared the GRE before, we have also worked on the GRE. Uh, and the center uh, partners with the target test prep for GRE classes and uh, EGMAT for the GMAT class. Okay. And uh, uh, I don't know, did, did you see the, 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 um, the post that we put uh, last? Uh, last uh, when was it last yesterday on the when was it, it was yesterday um uh yes it was yesterday the post on our results in uh in pune uh, yeah, yeah but that's all. You, you saw them uh, it was a, i'm sure that you i think that you that you that you even like them yeah so basically uh, unlike you the student that we have i'm going to share my my, my screen but the student that you that we had i'm going to share my screen now uh, they prepared everything with us. Uh, so you, you came with your GRE. You really had a pretty good GRE. But these students, I met them. Uh, 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 I think it was la last last summer. So sorry to send you this. It was it was uh, last last summer. And uh, so, but you know Nama because you know Nama. It will be with you. But basically, they prepared with us. So they prepared the GRE or the GMAT, huh? depending. Okay. Uh, you can see my screen, Senya. Senya. Yeah. 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 Basically, they prepared the GRE or the GMAT. So the GRE was between the lowest GRE that we had was a uh, 330 for Nile and 335 for Nama. Uh, you know Nama, I think, pretty well. Yeah. And they uh, so uh, they both got a very good schools. Huh? Or so, uh, they took the GMAT. The GMAT was between 680 to 760. Huh? And they all got their dream school. And so you have to see that. Uh, uh, Neil, he applied to HEC and ESSEC only, and he got ESSEC. And the Prane got accepted to IE, VAU, ESSEC, ESCP. Anyway, so they, I think it's pretty impressive. No? You know what you think? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's pretty yeah. impressive. Uh, and they're from Pune only. Uh, and there will be more coming up from Pune. Uh, so basically, all the students that, for instance, we got from Pune, either they will get in this year or next year, and some. For the best one, we have a good GMAT GRE, they get LBS, uh, ESSEC, ESCP, roughly that's the, the, the school that we get, HEC as well. And those who don't get good, uh, a good GMAT, or those who decide to apply without the GMAT, we send them to, um, we send them to um, uh, Warwick, uh, Warwick, uh, the New York College London, or um, Hopkins. Okay, and they are very happy with that because Basically, if you graduate from uh, from Imperial, so we send them to yes, sorry, we send them to Imperial, Kings, one week or UCL, okay. And when you graduate from Imperial, it's already very good, huh? okay. Uh, yeah. By the way, whether you graduate from Imperial or from LBS doesn't make any any much uh, difference. You agree? Huh? Well, we be slightly below, 
Uh, but they are part of the top uh, top 10 best business schools in the UK. So whether you get uh, one week or LBS, maybe the recognition internationally is not the same, but for a job in the UK, it comes to the same. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> you have a job interview, and it is uh, the, the, the quality of the job interview that will matter. So no matter where you come from at the end. Huh? Okay. Yeah. So basically, uh, for those who want to, um, to work with us, you can contact uh, Manan. Uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, <coughs> will be the point of contact, no Yeah. Um. Uh. And uh, so um. And I will also advertise this presentation so that people can can contact you to register with MDA Center. Huh? Okay. Voilà. Anything that you want to say? Any uh, useful piece of advice that you want to say? Yeah. Um. So the only piece of advice I would, I would give is. Uh, don't be scared of any application because when I was a couple of uh, last year when I was applying, I was really scared because I thought that LBS or HEC or schools like these won't be in Merida because I was scared to apply. And then um, you act you actually told me that I I can get into LBS if I try, and I got in, and it was my dream school. So I think it is the best if you are not scared of applying to any school. Just work on your profile and be confident in the interviews. And I think anybody can get in with some good advice. Uh, okay. So, uh, thank you very much for everything, Manan. Uh, it's a uh, it's a very good thing. So, so basically, so Manan is a very strong candidate uh, because he has a he's a he is a good student. He has a good GRE. He, uh, he has international exposure, professional experience. Is also different, huh? okay? Because we have, of course, many, many Indian students who come from engineering or from business. So, of course, it doesn't make you stand out, okay? But of course, if you have a different background, if you study, you know, architecture, uh, political science, uh, you're a teacher, uh, you're an entrepreneur, uh, you have been a bit abroad, but then you stand out. So, we say that it is difficult for an Indian to get in if you don't stand out. Okay? Yeah. Why take you uh, rather than another? But as soon as you have some type of difference, okay, um, then it's uh, it's easier. Look, uh, Manan, he got accepted to, uh, to uh, one, two, three, four, two, five schools out of six, huh? okay, and he's very good. Uh, but he shows that uh, if you if you can make a difference, they they will, they will take you, okay. Voilà. Yeah. I wish you a good day, Manan, and uh, happy happy Sunday. Voilà, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.